Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a comparison video today between the brand new Adidas F50 Adi Zero and the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9. This is the Messi signature, this is the Ronaldo signature, um, making this a fairly heated battle and in today's video I'm going to try and compare all of the technical specifications and the performance features of both shoes and hopefully allow you to make the best decision possible when it comes to which of these shoes is going to be the better option for yourself. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting off with the uppers on both the Mercurial Vapor 9 and F50 Addy Zero, you have two shoes that are designed to provide a true barefoot playing experience, a type of feel that to me has really been dominated by the Mercurial Vapor series over the last couple of years. But this time around with the new F50 Addy Zero, Adidas has made some dramatic improvements and some dramatic changes to the synthetic F50, making it a much more attractive option this time around and much more competitive in terms of performance and feel to that of the Mercurial Vapor 9, which gets me very, very excited. Now, starting off with the F50 Addy Zero, just as we've seen with past variations, the shoe is available in both leather as well as synthetic. The synthetic model is what I have in my hands right now, and what I'm gonna be talking about and comparing to the Vapor 9 in today's video. I have yet to wear the leather version of the F50 Addy Zero, but I do have a pair on the way, so look out for that video very shortly. But in terms of comparing the leather version to the uh, Mercurial Vapor, 9 I really wouldn't do that simply because the difference in feel is too dramatic and uh, you're dealing with two different types of shoes overall so again for the sake of comparison we're going to be talking about the synthetic F50 versus the Mercurial Vapor 9. Now the synthetic F50 Addy Zero has more or less undergone a complete redesign this time around. Adidas has completely ditched the sprint skin construction that we've seen on every single Addy Zero up until this one. Um, instead you have a two-part synthetic upper made of two different materials at the back of the shoe where you can see it's slightly translucent and it cuts off at this seam right here wraps around the heel and then cuts off at this seam right there this is called speed foil synthetic it's a newly developed synthetic from adidas designed not so much around touch but more so around making for a very lightweight construction while still maintaining the structural integrity of the shoe in the areas that really like i said aren't going to be uh exposed to too many touches on the ball and overall the speed foil synthetic it feels comfortable it's flexible enough it's not too rigid um, and it does the job for the most part while still maintaining a very lightweight profile which um, is very important when you're dealing with a shoe that's designed to be as light as possible now at the front of the shoe you can see that it features um, what looks to be almost like a leather material and that is because it's hybrid touch synthetic the same type of synthetic found on both the predator lz2 and the nitro charge 1.0 but obviously in a much slimmer profile this time around. It's very, very thin, very soft and flexible um, and offers a feel very similar to the Mercurial Vapor 9 or the Tejan Synthetic found on the Mercurial Vapor 9. But because it is softer and more flexible, um, it does offer a slightly more comfortable fit, at least in my opinion. And like I said, I'm just really impressed with the overall feel of this new Hybrid Touch Synthetic. Um, it's very soft, it moves nicely with your foot, and because it is um, so flexible, it does have that ability to stretch ever so slightly, making for a more custom and more comfortable feel pretty much from right out of the box. Now, in terms of other elements of the upper itself, it does feature a smooth leather grain finish across the upper itself, as you guys can see, which doesn't make for too much in the way of added friction. The tongue itself is also made from the same type of um, hybrid touch synthetic, very, very thin. So you have a uniform feel across the entire foot. And then this little bit of texturing you see going around the forefoot and instep here is called Dribble Tex. It's a slightly rubberized coating that is placed on top of the shoe, providing a little bit of additional grip in this part of the foot. It's not extremely noticeable and it's not really going to impact the overall experience that you're going to have with this shoe in a major way but it is a nice little feature that adidas has added on and it does help a little bit in wet weather playing conditions from what i've noticed now moving on to the mercurial vapor 9 you have a one-piece tasian synthetic upper but there is a little bit of upper variation with this shoe as you will find with the uh, f50 addy zero now the colorway that i have here features the speed control golf ball like dimpling across the entire upper it's a type of uh 
finish that's designed to provide a little bit of additional grip on the ball depending on when you're dribbling and when you're shooting and how you're dribbling and how you're shooting. It's something that has a very minor impact like I said and isn't a super noticeable feature as much as it is an aesthetic feature on the shoe itself. And then depending on the colorway like I said you could get the speed control finish or you could get the smooth leather grain finish which is silitation synthetic material just features a smooth artificial leather grain finish instead of the golf ball like dimples. Um, it's a slightly thinner feel on the ball, a little bit less grip as well, but for the most part the overall Mercurial Vapor 9 experience is very similar whether you get this finish or that finish. So keep that in mind and again the finishes vary depending on the colorway that you go for. Now as far as the rest of the shoe itself, both shoes or both upper variations will feature ACC all conditions control which essentially acts as a wet control element for both shoes providing a little bit better friction between your foot and the ball in wet weather playing conditions but overall the Tatian synthetic material on this shoe is very thin it's very flexible it does require a little bit of break in time but once the shoe is well broken in um, and it has kind of had time to heat up and mold to your feet it really does offer one of the best barefoot playing experiences available on the market and is still very very competitive with the brand new F50 Addy Zero. I would say that this shoe does have a slightly tighter fit overall which you may or may not like but for the most part in terms of feel if you are looking for that barefoot playing experience you're going to get an equally satisfying feel from both the Vapor 9 as well as the F50 Addy Zero. Moving on to the stud patterns and sole plates of both the Vapor 9 and the F50 Addy Zero, you have two shoes that are going to provide some fantastic traction when it comes to outright grip when pushing off, as well as just grip when making quick changes of direction. Now starting off with the Mercurial Vapor 9, you have a glass fiber base for the sole plate itself. Again, depending on the colorway, there will be a little bit of variation whether or not you have two layers of glass fiber all the way through or only two layers of glass fiber in the midfoot and heel area, whereas certain colorways like the one I have here features only one single layer of glass fiber in the forefoot. Again, the variation is minimal and really has absolutely no impact in terms of the overall feel and performance of the shoe itself. Of course, you have your stud plate over top. This is the firm ground stud pattern of the Mercurial Vapor 9. And it's a very distinctive looking type of stud pattern in that it's fairly minimal for a firm ground stud pattern. There's very few studs. You have only two studs here in the heel and pretty much four main studs to make up the stud pattern in the forefoot with one support stud in the middle. All of the studs are positioned in all the major push-off points under your foot and on an ideal firm ground natural grass plane surface, meaning a fairly premium field, the performance you're going to get out of this particular stud pattern is some of the best, if not the best stud pattern that you can get um, in terms of outright grip and ability to change direction in a um, at very high speeds I should say with minimal slipping. Now on fields that are a little bit harder, less ideal playing conditions I should say, this is in my experience not the best type of stud pattern to use, especially on harder ground simply because in order for this stud pattern to really work properly, the studs have to dig into the ground pretty deep in order to get the amount of grip that you need simply because there are so few studs under you. So if you are playing on harder natural grass playing surfaces you may find some issues with stability, you may even run into some issues with slight stud pressure. So again this is a stud pattern that performs really really well but it's not really designed for um, feels that are a little bit harder or just less than ideal natural grass plane surfaces I should say. Now moving on to the new F50 Addy Zero sole plate and stud pattern. It features a very similar sprint frame construction to what we've seen in the past. Adidas has gone back to a more rounded shape on the external heel counter which really doesn't do much in terms of overall performance or feel. And then it's pretty much just a single one piece plastic design. Your my coach slot there in the midfoot so if you do have the my coach chip you can just slot it in there and track your statistics. The heel studs as you can see have remained exactly exactly the same. You have two larger triangle studs at the back and then two smaller triangular studs here in front of them. And then the forefoot, this is where you're going to see the major redesign. They've gone away from the triangular shaped studs like you see in the heel and gone with a slightly different triangle shape, more of a longer bladed style stud and I really like the layout of this particular stud pattern. It provides a slightly lower to the ground feel and because the studs have a slightly larger surface area or longer surface area this time around, it feels a lot more stable and in terms of grip at push off, you get a lot more of that. It also is kind of designed to allow you to decelerate a lot more quickly just 
because of how the angles of the studs are. And overall, I just had a really good time and really good playing experience with this brand new stud pattern from Adidas. It performs well. There's plenty of grip at push off. You still have that freedom to twist and turn once your foot is planted. And I also like this little toe pick kind of idea they have on here. Very similar to what you're going to find on the Mercurial Vapor 9 with these little kind of ridges in there. For the most part, it's not a major thing. It's not going to be something you're going to notice under feet, but it's one of those little added elements of grip that may save you from slipping even just one time, which to me is worth having on there and that it adds pretty much no extra bulk to the shoe. So in terms of improvement coming from the last F50 stud pattern, this is a major improvement in my opinion. And I'm really glad to see that Adidas is starting to give us some variation from model to model with their stud patterns. In terms of weight, both the Vapor 9 and the F50 Addy Zero are designed to be as light as possible, and you're going to get that lightweight feel from either of these two shoes. Now keep in mind, for the sake of comparison, both shoes I have on the table are in brand new condition and in a size 9 US, so I'm going to weigh both pairs for you today in real time. Keep in mind, again, brand new size 9 US. This Vapor 9, as you guys can see, weighs in at 6.6 .6 ounces, so very, very lightweight. We'll take that off the scale, throw the F50 on, and you can see that these guys weigh in at 5.8 ounces. So there's about a one ounce difference between the two, which is not a lot, but there definitely is a noticeable difference in weight going from the F50 to the Vapor 9, mainly due to, to the construction overall. The Vapor 9 is a much more solid feeling shoe, mainly due to the stiffer, slightly more responsive feel from the glass fiber sole plate. Whereas the F50 Addy Zero just has a very weightless, well-balanced feel about it. It's most noticeably very light in the back half heel area of the shoe, both in hand as well as on feet. So if you're looking for a lightweight feel that still has a nice solid construction about it and still feels very responsive, the Vapor 9 is definitely going to be the better of the two options. Whereas if you're looking something that's just completely weightless and feels like you're wearing nothing on feet at all, the F50 Addy Zero is definitely the way to go. All right, here's a look at the new F50 Addy Zero and Mercurial Vapor 9 on feet. As you may have already noticed, these are different colors than what I've been using in the videos. That's because the two shoes that I have on my feet are broken in and used pairs. So you get a better idea as to how these shoes look and fit after several hours of wear time. Now in terms of the overall comfort from right out of the box with both of these two shoes, the F50 is definitely a lot more flexible. The hybrid touch synthetic is softer from right out of the box, whereas the glass fiber sole plate on the Vapor 9 will take a little bit of getting used to and is relatively stiff from brand new. So again, give it a couple hours of break in time with both of these two shoes and they definitely will become a lot more comfortable. For the most part, you shouldn't have any major issues with discomfort or blistering. In terms of fit, both of these are less than ideal for wide-footed players. I would say that they definitely have a tighter fitting or slightly narrow profile about them. The Vapor 9 definitely be the more narrow fitting shoe of the two, especially through the midfoot, whereas in the forefoot and toe box area, it still is relatively tight. Whereas the F50 Addy Zero in comparison is slightly wider pretty much all the way through, but for the most part is still a very tight fitting shoe. The one thing to take into consideration here is that the Hybrid Touch Synthetic on the F50 does have a little bit more stretch to it than what you're going to get from the Cajun Synthetic on the Mercurial Vapor 9. In terms of sizing, I'm wearing a size 9 US in both of these two shoes, and the fit and the length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order either the Vapor 9 or the F50 Addy Zero, I would strongly recommend going true to size for the best possible fit. So that's pretty much it as far as the on-feet portion of this video, and I'll leave you to my final thoughts. All right, guys, that's it for my comparison between the F50 Addy Zero from Adidas and the Mercurial Vapor 9 from Nike. Both of these are absolutely fantastic shoes when it comes to lightweight performance. I would say that if you want something that's going to offer a perfect balance between lightweight and responsiveness, the Vapor 9 is the way to go. It's a very good shoe, provides a nice lockdown, secure feel on foot. And of course, the traction pattern on here provides some tremendous traction at push off. Um, which really is unmatched by any other shoe currently out there on the market. Whereas the F50 Addy Zero is one of the lightest options out there. So if you're looking for a truly weightless playing experience, the F50 is the way to go. Not to mention that the upper is very thin, extremely soft, nice and flexible. And the new traction pattern is not too shabby either. So again, either way you go, you're going to be making a good call. They're both fantastic shoes when it comes to overall performance. As 
far as which one is my favorite, it's a very difficult call for me to make. I'm a big fan of both of these two shoes, but I've had to pick a pair right now to play in. I think it would be the brand new F50 Addy Zero. Well, that's pretty much it for my comparison video, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope I answered all of your questions. If there is a question that I missed, be sure to ask it down below in the comments and I will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to support it with a like. If you guys are looking for more information on either of these two shoes, be sure to refer to the full written reviews linked down below in the description on my website, SoccerReviewsForYou.com. On those review pages as well, you will find the Buy It Now links with the best prices online, including exclusive SR4U coupon codes to get yourself some additional discounts if you are interested in ordering either of these two shoes for yourself. Other than that though guys, subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information down below in the description. And other than that, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.